Hey, a friend, Chris here from Wide Logic Pro Rules, the website and channel that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I want to show you how to import an audio file that you've downloaded from somewhere, maybe you purchased, and import it into your project so you can begin composing alongside this idea, having it as the foundation of what ultimately will be your song. So let's say, for example, you've scoured the internet and you found a file of a piano performance. And you want to bring it into your project so you can start laying down drums and bass and guitars and vocal ideas, you know, just start putting stuff on it. Or maybe the opposite. You just have a melodic idea that you want to start laying down a beat to, so on and so forth. But the point is, is we need to bring this file in, which is pretty easy. But then from there, how do you compose alongside it without the grid, without a metronome, without a locked timing reference so you can get down to composing? Now, I recognize I've been harping on the metronome. For the last few videos, I have a video all about recording alongside drummer, so you have a consistent tempo. Then I have a video about free tempo recording. So you just record your idea and figure out the tempo later. But the point is, as I see a lot of projects, I get a lot of questions, and many of us are just bringing in an audio file and writing to it. But without the grid matching the creative idea that you've imported, it's really hard to compose. It's really hard to lay down session players, loops, your own ideas without some sort of reference for where major beats, major downbeats are occurring. So let's dig into it. As you can see on screen, I have an empty project and I'm going to be importing an audio file from actually a separate project. If I go to the finder, I have this bounce of my friend's band. They were playing live at a show and it was recorded. And I want to import this audio file so I can start adding to it or mixing it or whatever the case may be. So I'm going to drag this in to a new track. And all right, so we have our audio file. If we take a quick listen. Now check it out. Maybe I want to extract the drums and start playing something else completely to the drums. So let's right click and go down to processing and we'll use stem splitter and I'm going to extract just the drums. All right, we have our drum track here. We take a listen. Okay, this is just purely for songwriting purposes. From here though, if we take a look at the tempo track, it's at 120 beats per minute, as can be seen in the LCD. Now, if I turn on the metronome, if we try to listen alongside this, and let me just make sure the metronome is pretty quiet. Take a listen. It's never going to match up, especially as variations occur over time because this was a live performance. Probably safe to assume the band was not playing at one tempo the whole time. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. I'm actually going to back up everything I've just done, so I'm just going to get rid of what I've imported and the stem splitting. And I'm going to go up to the beats per minute in the LCD where it says keep tempo. And I'm going to set this to adapt. All right, so you can see that the line here in the global track, so we need to reveal the global tracks. So you can press that button. You can see that the line before the playhead is in blue. The line after the playhead's in orange. If I drag this back, the entire tempo track lane is in orange now. So let's go back to the finder and let's drag this file back in. Because I set the tempo to adapt, Logic Pro has gone ahead and has figured out the tempo of this file moment by moment. It's created an average tempo map and it's applied it to the tempo track lane here. Logic Pro is asking, do you want to edit the downbeat and tempo information? I could click show and this will show me the smart tempo editor. But for now, we're just going to close it and zoom in. And now we're going to listen with the metronome to this performance. That sounds pretty on to me. Check it out down here. This 
Amazon's really good. And you could see just by scaling the global tracks that it's done a pretty good job. Now it's an averaging of tempo. It's not doing it moment by moment. It's averaging. So it might not be exactly on every beat, but pretty close. I'm quite happy with this. Now let's say you have an audio file that's at a consistent tempo. You know it's at a consistent tempo. You don't need to dig into things like smart tempo or adapt tempo. You just need to know what's the tempo. Well, in that case, we could just apply the metering plugin, the BPM counter. And we could start it, let's say, from right when the band kicks in. So we have some rhythmic energy beyond just the guitar. If I hit play. Now, obviously, the BPM counter is having a hard time here, most likely because the transients aren't that obvious in the audio. Of course, I could use Stem Splitter to split up the file and then have BPM counter analyze just the drums by itself. That would probably help. But, you know, this recording isn't at one consistent tempo. So let me bring up an instance of Drummer. This will be an example that provides a clear, more obvious rhythmic activity for BPM counter. And I'll set the entire tempo here. Let's set it back to keep. Every time you use adapt tempo, dragging it in and then you're done, you probably want to turn it back to keep. But let's just get rid of all this stuff, right? And we'll set it at a consistent 120. Or we'll set it to something a little off, 158. I'll mute this file for right now. And we'll bring our BPM counter on a drummer. Check it out. All right, the BPM counter is cutting it in half, the tempo in half. So we see 79 as opposed to 158. If we multiply it times two, there you go, 158. Or you can go in the opposite direction by clicking on the divide two. So first we imported an audio file that's not at a consistent tempo. And we had Logic Pro figure out the tempo by using the adapt behavior here in the LCD. The benefit here is that you have a custom tempo map that you can then apply session players, apply loops, Lay down your own creative ideas. That way you know exactly where the major bars and beats occur. In this third scenario, we have an audio file that, of course, plays at a varying tempo. And before I do that, I should remember, let me go back to my finder. Let's set this back to adapt and then import it. Okay, so we have an audio file that plays at a varying tempo. But there's a good chance that you may want the audio file to conform to a single tempo because it'll make your life a lot easier as you write and record. In that case, we wanna make sure that flex and follow for the audio file is turned on. Okay, so we saw some activity occur because I turned flex and follow on. And if we show flex, we can see that the flex button here in the track header has been enabled and the mode is set to polyphonic. All right, so let's expand the tempo track lane here and take a look and try to figure out what's the average tempo for this performance. So we have 90, 91, 93, 94, 97. We're speeding up a little, slowing down to about 92, 90, so on and so forth, right? So I'm going to say the average tempo here is 90. And I want this audio file to conform to 90 beats per minute. So it's super simple. We turn on flex and follow for this region. As noted here in the region inspector, and all I have to do is click, hold, and drag my mouse over all of these tempo nodes. So they're all highlighted. And then I press delete. And I can set this to 90. Now, if we show flex again, we can see now that the color of the region has changed from pink, which is the color of the track lane, to varying shades of white and gray. White represents areas of the audio file that have been sped up. Gray indicates areas of the audio file that have slowed down. And all these blue markers are tempo markers. So now Logic Pro has adjusted the tempo of this region to a consistent 90 beats per minute. So let's take a listen. Right there, you can hear some shenanigans have occurred. We are using the polyphonic mode for flex time, 
which I would recommend out of the gate. That's the first thought I would have had for this file. It's a complex audio file. There's a lot going on. Polyphonic is typically the complex algorithm for complex scenarios, but it's not sounding very good. We're getting this artifact on the right hand side. So let's try something like rhythmic. It's sounding pretty good until that first hit, right? Right here. Okay, so that's not gonna work. I'm gonna guess that monophonic is probably also not gonna work, but let's give it a try. Monophonic actually did a lot better than I expected it to, but let's try slicing in this case. Slicing, instead of time stretching the file, slicing is basically just gonna move these beats around. It's literally as if you had split up the region and moved it around. So let's take a listen. As it turns out, monophonic mode is the best option for our use case, which surprised me, while all the other modes result in some sort of artifacts. But if you were paying attention to the metronome in the background, the metronome is lockstep with this audio file and vice versa. The audio file is playing at one tempo that you can then begin to compose alongside with. Okay, so number one, I promise I'm not going to harp on tempo in next week's video. I just wanted to create this trilogy of videos between the last couple of weeks for a variety of circumstances because tempo is the foundation of which everything sits upon when it comes to writing and composing. You don't have to use a click or the grid or a metronome, but it makes your life so much easier. Number two, we're talking about some advanced concepts and maybe you felt like I flew through some of these concepts. I'll include links to videos down below in the description that will take you to further videos about these different topics if you want a deeper dive. I hope this week's video was helpful for you and I'll check you for more later next week. Take care.